I remember having a roommate. My roommate was Richard Cohen, and and he he asked me one night. He said, "What what are you what are you doing here?" And I said, "I." And I remember my answer. I said, "I'm trying to dig a ditch for my energy to run through." And I remember telling one of my friends that I dropped out of medical school, and he said, "Oh, you have chosen the romance of an uncertain future." 大家好，今天我给大家带来的是对一位我非常敬仰的纪录片电影人 Ross Spears 的访谈。Ross 拍摄的第一部纪录片《A.G.》就获得了1980年奥斯卡最佳纪录片提名。认识 Ross 是在六年前的电影课堂上，老师请他来给我们讲他的作品《To Render a Life》。我印象深刻的是，他穿了一件袖口脱了线、显然年代久远的毛衣。虽然不修边幅，但温和的谈吐中透着儒雅和智慧。他的那部电影相当深刻，一边记录一个美国贫困家庭的日常生活点滴，另一边又在探讨纪录片拍摄的艺术。两条线索在故事内外穿梭，用洞察他人的镜头，同时来审视手握镜头的人，颇费观众的脑力。相对好莱坞大片。纪录片电影人的世界寂静很多。Ross 在大学时曾经计划要读医学院，但后来却选择了用镜头讲述真实的故事。我总是对走不寻常道路的人充满好奇，想知道他们是如何找到自己的。于是就有了这次访谈。I'm really grateful that you agreed to do this interview with me. I think we met six years ago when I was in the filmmaking program,、mm -hmm. uh, and you were a guest、um, lecturer there. And I was personally so inspired by your personal story that how you chose your、uh, career path,、mm -hmm. and、uh, and honestly, I think that experience, the filmmaking experience, is one of the two peaks. Peak experience in my life, and the other one is becoming a mom. <laughs> But I think you know, and that experience really changed the、uh, the my life.、Uh, and and I'm not exaggerating. Just not that I've learned how to make film. I still don't know. <laughs> not that I'm so scared of a camera and technology.、Mm -hmm. But I think it really. I think at that point. Um, I got a taste of what it's like to do what you love to do, and I made the decision that, you know, I will not settle until I find what I love to do.、Mm, and、good. and I mean that sense, it was really a turning point or a peak experience for me.、Mm -hmm. Um, so I think today, like the really the goal of our conversation, I would like you to share your personal story with my audience that how you chose your career、okay. and along that process, you know. What kind of challenges and obstacles that you have met? So my first question would be, how did you find out that your true passion is filmmaking? And I mean, did you have a magical moment, like, ding, you know, <laughs> this is it, or, um, you know, or you know, have you gone through some trial and errors? And do you、mm -hmm. feel like documentary filmmaking is the thing they are meant to do, or it's one of the options? Well, okay, the,、uh, the last question first, yes. Uh, I mean, I can't imagine not being a documentary filmmaker now. Of course, I've been doing it. Well, I guess I made my first film in about nineteen seventy. See, I I grew up in、um, East Tennessee in in the fifties and sixties, and、uh, that's a long way from any kind of media place.、Mm -hmm. And、um, and I grew up thinking that I was going to be a doctor. And how I, did you get that idea?、Or? Well, you know, I I grew up the, with the idea that I I should have some sort of sense of meaning for my mm -hmm, life, mm -hmm. and that a sense of purpose in my life. And part of that came from a sort of a religious background. And、uh, part of it just was part of my sort of family story, yeah. You know, so the the the, the profession of being a doctor really appealed to me.、Mm -hmm. I mean, I thought, you know, there there was this one doctor that I heard about when I was growing up. I heard I heard about Dr. King over and over and over、mm -hmm. again, because he was this guy. He he actually was very old-fashioned. He drove his own horse and buggy.、Mm -hmm. 
you know, he did house calls mm -hmm. to people's houses. He came to visit my grandmother at her house all the mm -hmm. time when she was sick. You know, Dr. King was kind of a saint, you know. Mm -hmm. he, he, would, he would come to your, come to your house and, and help you. So that was the kind of doctor that I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so I thought that I was going to be that when I went away to college. Mm -hmm. and, um, but at the same time, I had become very um, interested in, in re reading and literature. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so I, I was thinking also about being a writer. Um, I think that being a writer actually was what I was trying, you know, in, in my mind, you know, there's this, there's this, in, in the, in the movie Dr. Zhivago, <laughs> or in the novel Dr. Zhivago, he's a doctor, mm -hmm. but also a poet. And so I was kind of thinking, you know, so there was William Carlos Williams, who was a doctor and a poet, mm -hmm. and, there, and, and Chekhov was a doctor and also a short story writer. Mm -hmm. And so I was imagining sort of that possibility, right? Okay. <laughs> and, um... And so I went through um, college um, with a double major of English and also pre-med. And I actually got into medical school. Mm -hmm. I got into a really good medical school and had to decide, you know, whether I was going to go to medical school or not. Mm -hmm. And... Um, And also, not going to medical school would have meant I was eligible for the draft, because oh. the Vietnam War was going on, okay. and, and it was 1969, and the draft it was at the height of the Vietnam War here mm -hmm. in this country. So after I graduated from college, I, I hitchhiked around the country <laughs> as a kind of a thing that I, I, a lot of people I didn't had known had done. And. It took about six or eight weeks to do it, and you know it was like camping out and mm -hmm. sleeping in abandoned cars, and you know, it was, just, you know, it was a very long trip around the country. And I came back, and it gave me a great deal of self confidence. And I remember riding across Arkansas with a, with a guy who had picked me up, and I thought, I'm not going to go to medical school. <laughs> <laughs> so that was when I decided not to go to medical school. I went to the dean of the medical school and said. I'm gonna. I, I don't think I'm gonna go to medical school. How, how did that, how did that change happen? Well, you know, the the the, the point was that I that I had I had come to the conclusion that if I went to medical school, it would be like getting on a conveyor belt. Uh, you know, you go to medical school for three. I guess it's three years. I'm not three sure. or four years. Yeah. Three or four years. Then you get out and you're, you know, you've invested all this time. Mm -hmm. You're then an intern for a year. Then you've got to be a resident for three mm -hmm. or four years. You come out the other side and you've got a, a solid profession. And now you, now you're deeply in debt and you've got to, <laughs> got to make, you've got to be a doctor. There's no choice. Mm -hmm. uh, and I didn't like that sort of conveyor belt sort mm -hmm. of image. So I, so I told the dean that I was thinking about. He said, well, you can come back next year if you want. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can take a year off. I got a gap year. Mm -hmm. And I remember telling one of my friends that I dropped out of medical school, and he said, oh, you have chosen the romance of an uncertain future. <laughs> 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 and, and I felt good about it. You know, I felt like, okay, yeah, I, I really have made this decision. My parents were kind of upset. <laughs> so, but then I had to figure out, you know, what? How to make it. Right? What was I going to uh -huh, do with yeah. my life? And, and so I, I came back to Durham, where I was living, and, and lived in... You know, one of the secrets of, of my life has been to, to have a very, what they call, a low overhead life. Mm -hmm. So I don't have... So I, so I lived in a basement of a, I have a house that my friends lived in. Mm -hmm. In a, in a room that I made for myself in the basement. I paid no rent. I washed all the dishes for my friends. <laughs> and while I was living, doing that, I, one of my friends was getting interested in photography, and I, mm -hmm. I never had done photography. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I, I, I did a, um, 
I did a drug uh, trial experiment at the at the Duke Hospital, and they paid me three hundred dollars for it. You know, it was just yeah, I don't know what to it. it was kind of disgusting, but but they paid me three hundred dollars, and with that money, I was able to buy a camera. Oh wow! A steel camera. And he, my friend Mac, and I taught ourselves photography, mm -hmm. and um, and I really liked it. I really liked taking pictures. Now I had. I had previously, that was not my first experience in film, mm -hmm. however. My father had had, had a, uh, a, a home movie camera oh, okay. that he took movies at, on vacations mm -hmm. or birthdays or mm -hmm. something like that. And he would disappear back into his bedroom and he would splice these little things together uh -huh. and he would come out and show them to us. Mm -hmm. And I had, when I was 15 years old, taken the movie camera with me on a trip this was my first time ever to leave home. Mm -hmm. I had taken the movie camera with me to Mexico. Mm -hmm. My little church group, mm -hmm. had, my little ch my church had organized a trip to Mexico. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so I, I took this home movie camera and I shot film as we went. And um, so when we got home, you know, all the parents wanted to see, mm -hmm. you know, what the, what it did. So I spliced it together as best I could and showed it at, at a, at a get-together a few months later. Mm -hmm. And I had to narrate it all, you know, and, and talk. Because that's a real film. <laughs> yeah, it's like, as if it was a real film. And so it was like, I don't know, 15 minutes long, mm -hmm. and I told about this and that. Mm -hmm. And it and it really felt good. I really liked that experience. And and um, so that was when I was 15. But And then I guess when I dropped out of medical school, I got that camera back for my dad and, and, and shot a little film with it that year and, and, and edited it together. It was a film about a film about a uh, music festival that was in, in North Carolina. And I liked doing that and, and I, so I, I began to get the idea that maybe, maybe I should try to be a documentary filmmaker. And, um, but I, you know, I didn't really know how to do it. Mm -hmm. Now, the University of North Carolina at that time had a program called Radio, TV, and Motion Pictures. Mm -hmm. It was a really, really, really lousy <laughs> introduction to anything. But I, I enrolled after this one year of being out of school mm -hmm. and living with my friends. I enrolled at the University of North Carolina to study in their film department. And during that time, I actually made a little documentary called Howard. It was a portrait of a of an old man who lived at a boarding house I knew. And um, that was a great experience making that film. I, sh I should show it to you someday. Um, it was just 15 minutes long. Mm -hmm. And um, they, at the University of North Carolina, at this, in 1971, I mean, they had the crudest possible editing situation really 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 primitive and but you know I made this 15 minute film put music with it you put sound effects with it and it was this portrait of, 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 How, of Howard this man at this boarding house old man in a boarding house and um, that that was really what solidified it and I remember the feeling you know when I, when I was making when I was putting together Howard mm -hmm. I remember the feeling I remember thinking, I have never finished anything in my life. You know, <laughs> I am somehow going to make myself finish this. <laughs> so I did, you know, and that was a, that was a real triumph, you know. That was yeah. a, that, that was like twenty three years old at the, at the time, I guess. Because it's your creation. Yeah. I think in that sense, I had the same feeling mm -hmm. with my first work. Yeah, 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 and you know, and so ever since then. That's been one of my guiding principles. If it is that if I start something, I've got to finish it. <laughs> you know, also I'm going to feel terrible. So I, you know, I just have to see it, see it through to the end. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's been a real long struggle. But I say to myself, as long as I can just stay alive, <laughs> I'm going to finish this damn film. <laughs> and sometimes that's kind of been been what it took. 
But um, anyway, so I made it, made Howard. Didn't exactly know what to do with it, but um, the next year, I mean, I had to get a job. I got, I got a job with a friend of mine, had a job as a land surveyor. And so I got a mm. job with his company as a mm. land surveyor. So in order to be mm -hmm. a, because at that point I did know that so you, you, somehow I, mm -hmm. I wanted to be a filmmaker. So you made up your mind at that, at that point. I think at that point I made up my mind, and I and I got and I found out about a, a school that was opening in California. Mm -hmm. I started looking into sort of. I mean, you know, I'm a, I was a student mm -hmm. you know, at heart. You know, <laughs> I started looking for schools. To go to, right? <laughs> so I found I, I looked into various film schools and. And I found out about this one school in, in California that was brand new. Mm -hmm. It was just starting out. And so I applied to them, and uh, I went out to California and to, to learn the trade. And and, uh, and I, I remember having a roommate. My roommate was Richard Cohen, and and he he asked me one night. He said, "What what are you what are you doing here?" And I said, I, and I remember my answer. I said, I'm trying to dig a ditch for my energy to run through. Oh, wow. You know, because I thought if I learn how to, if I learn how to be a filmmaker, mm -hmm. you know, then I can actually do this. Mm -hmm. You know, and I didn't exactly know quite what kind of filmmaker I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. I just knew I knew I wanted to learn how you do it. Mm -hmm. And, and I was learning, you know, and I knew that um, I mean, I knew that I was smart enough, and I knew that I could. <clears throat> but I had see, I had no no skill. I had no experience whatsoever in in the world of theater or mm -hmm. or fiction film mm -hmm. or even writing. The only only experience I had was in sort of documentary work, real mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. doing real life situations. But uh, but I really enjoyed that, you know. I mean, it's a, just it's a terrific thrill. Mm -hmm. I mean, as you probably mm -hmm. have uh, experienced, um, you know, you 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 shoot something and you learn about something and you and you organize the material mm -hmm. in such a way that it makes sense mm -hmm. to you. First of all, you put some music with it, you put some words with it, you know, you put some interviews with it. You know, so so you're kind of telling a story, and mm -hmm. it can be short or long. Uh, you know, a big story or a short story or a story about the past or something that's happening now. I mean, there's just all kinds of things that are wonderful about it, and you and you and you get to dive into some sort of a subject that you know very little about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you learn about this this thing, and you meet all these people that you mm -hmm. otherwise would never meet. Yeah. And and they're all, generally speaking, they're all really interesting people, and and you have an excuse for getting into their lives. You know, <laughs> oh, I'll make a film about it. <laughs> and, and so they they oh yeah, come on in. <laughs> Sign a release for us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's always part of it. Um, and so so um, the doing of it really proved that mm -hmm. I loved it. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it was not. You know, it, 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 I was lucky that I was able to do it really on the cheap mm -hmm. for a long time. And I was able to, um, I was in a situation in which, uh, you know, I could get by on part-time jobs. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sure my parents were, you know, certainly when I was in my, in my hometown, they were helping me. Um, there were there were ways to do it cheaply. Even now, now you can do it even more cheaply. Yeah, I think with the technology and all that. I mean, I think going to school will probably be expensive, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, I don't know like whether you'll have to go to school. I mean, there are a lot yeah. of other learning sources. Oh yeah, there's yeah. lots of ways to do mm -hmm. do it. Uh, I mean, it's one of these things. One of the sayings I lived by growing up, mm -hmm. and I remember. Where there's a will, there's a way. Yeah, you know that. Yeah. You know that old saying. Yeah. And I just, you know, kind of believed it. You know, mm -hmm. where if you really want something, you can make it happen. And it may not be easy. I mean, you know. So what? I I spent two years at CalArts. 
and um, you know worked on other people's films a mm -hmm. little bit. Well, you know, it's an art school. They do all kinds of things there: mm -hmm. theater, art, music. And you know, so I experienced a lot of different things at night. You know, I would go to the performances mm -hmm. and the dances and dance and artwork and mu concerts and stuff. And so I experienced a lot of that stuff. And at the same time, you know, you're you're supposed to do a project, mm -hmm. um, and then you're going to be judged in that project. There were no there were no grades at CalArts at that time. So my project was to do a uh, a script about James A. G. That was the other thing that I that I got inspired by was the writer James Agee. Mm -hmm. I had read his work while I was in school, and and he was, and I really had fallen in love with his work, and so I knew. I, you know, I thought it would be a neat idea to make a film about him. Mm -hmm. And when I. But. You know, confidence is so so important. You know. When I when I went to have a, a meeting with my advisor, my men, they they called them mentors. Mm -hmm. I went to my I went to my mentor the sort of the last couple of weeks of school and said I had a going away sort of meeting with him. Mm -hmm. And he said, "What are you going to do next?" And I said, "Well, you know, I, you know, I I could have said, well, I'm going to try to get a job as an editor or mm -hmm. or a cameraman or or something like that, but I." But I, I I always knew that I was really not I was not psychologically suited to be anything except the director, <laughs> you know. I mean I had worked on other people's projects mm -hmm. and I've always thought you know. I mean I'm learning stuff and I'll do this, but I, you know, I'm not going to want to do this for my life. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to make films. So, so I was talking about with my mentor about projects that I think thought I might want to work on and I brought up the subject of making a film about James Agee's life mm -hmm. and I said well you know but I think I'll do that you know after I've done some other things and gotten more experience and he said I think you can do it now you know I me mean, I think you know enough to do it now在访谈的第二部分里,Ross将会谈到他如何用最低的预算来拍出一部奥斯卡提名的纪录片,以及他在追求梦想的道路上如何面对挫折和自我怀疑。下次再见。